The nostalgic coming-of-age baseball movie The Sandlot features James Earl Jones in a small but crucial role as Mr. Myrtle, whose character hints at a dark part of baseball history that the film completely glosses over. Mr. Myrtle bonds with Tom Guyry Scott Smalls and Mike Vitar's Benny, the Jet, Rodriguez over their shared love of the great American pastime, but the endlessly quotable movie The Sandlot does not delve into the details of Mr. Myrtle's exact past in the professional world of baseball. Smalls' friends live and breathe baseball, and they pass their passion on to Smalls over the course of the summer of 1962, loosely based on the writer-slash-director's childhood. Mr. Myrtle saves Smalls' skin by giving him a priceless artifact from his days as a professional baseball player himself. In the process, Mr. Myrtle shares a heartwarming story about his legendary contemporary, Babe Ruth. However, while this moment is presented as a wistful piece of nostalgia, it also ignores one of the most uncomfortable aspects of baseball's history which the rest of the Sandlot does not address. The Sandlot ignores a dark reality about baseball in the 60s. Ambiguity allows different interpretations of a character's backstory. The spirit of Babe Ruth in the Sandlot. The Sandlot, released in 1993, is set in the 1960s to evoke a feeling of nostalgia, hearkening back to a time when kids could enjoy unsupervised outdoor time until supper. The spirit of Babe Ruth, portrayed by Art Lafleur, appears in a dream sequence to motivate Benny when all hope seems lost. The Sultan of Swat's parting words echo to Benny, there's heroes, and there's legends. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. When Mr. Myrtle learns that Smalls ruined his stepfather's autographed ball, he offers Smalls a different ball signed not just by the King of Crash, but by the entire murderer's row of 1927. Mr. Myrtle reveals that he used to play ball himself. He didn't just know Babe Ruth, Babe knew him. In James Earl Jones' dulcet tones, Mr. Myrtle starts to explain that he could have broken Babe's home run record, then trails off. Smalls fills in the blanks that Mr. Myrtle went blind, and Mr. Myrtle confirms it. If Mr. Myrtle played at the same time as Babe in the 1920s and 30s, he would have played in the Negro Leagues, which were active in the early 20th century, before the sport integrated in 1947. Players of color were relegated to teams with less funding, and their stats were excluded from official records. Mr. Myrtle's talk with the boys is intentionally vague. He doesn't specify when or for which team he played, or how or when he went blind. Perhaps his sight cut his career short, or perhaps he did break Babe's record, but in a separate league. Either way, the movie doesn't address this dark chapter in baseball history. Why the Sandlot foregoes historical accuracy. The Sandlot is both a children's movie and a light-hearted sports comedy. Keeping Mr. Myrtle's background ambiguous or textually unspecified is the right call. It would feel expositional and clunky to introduce this part of baseball history at this point in the film, which is already in the denouement. The scene with James Earl Jones can be left open to interpretation. A viewer with an eye towards critical analysis can apply historical context without disrupting the narrative, but the conversation can be taken at face value with the scene losing impact. Because the movie is narrated by an adult Smalls, the Sandlot can be interpreted as being seen through the rose-colored glasses of someone fondly recalling and perhaps exaggerating their childhood. The dog wasn't just big, it was a beast. Benny wasn't just strong, he split a baseball at the seams. Smalls could have missed clues during the conversation with Mr. Myrtle, especially as he jumps in when Mr. Myrtle trails off. However, given the movie's childlike tone, unpacking baseball's traumatic history in the finale would have felt extremely jarring.